Good afternoon, everyone, or should I say good evening? Uh, today's lesson is uh, on lesson number 10, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, a new beginning, a new beginning. Be strong from the beginning in our Be Strengthen Thy Brethren series in, in uh, 2 Peter, uh, or rather uh, 1 Peter, second chapter, beginning with verse 1. Boy, trying to get it all straightened out here mentally and verbally, amen? <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as sincere babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, that's verse 3. If you, if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, then we are to lay these things aside. Lay them aside. Just lay them down. And so Peter, uh, the Apostle Peter, is speaking here. And he's very clear as to what he's saying. There's, he's not mincing any words here. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to teach your word. Give us... Uh, wide dissemination and an expedition father expedite this video widely i pray father for your holy spirit to be our teacher father in jesus name amen all right a new life a new beginning when you first get saved and you accept christ as your savior you change you change your mind you change your heart there's a change of heart and a change of mind there's a there's a complete different attitude you don't change yourself. God changes you automatically. He changes you. Uh, but it, uh, now it takes time to grow, as Peter said, but you have a new position in Christ in that you have eternal life given to you upon salvation. That's a wonderful, wonderful change of life. It's a new way of thinking it's a new way of talking it's a new way of acting it's a new life that is a changed life uh, so the believer must lay aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and all envies and all evil speakings do we always do that no nope, not all the time so now we're being challenged again to lay all these things aside and uh present uh, our bodies to the Lord for the Lord to transform us from the inside out the inside out okay so this transformation comes through feeding feeding eating on this book reading is feeding eating is reading the Word of God through our eyes reading concentrating taking it all in just like a good meal uh, you see your mashed potatoes, you see your gravy, you see your, your, your meat, your meat and potatoes, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of a guy. Oh man, I'll, put, I'll tell you what, brother, you're down to my spiritual level, you start talking about food, brother. I mean, what? But, but to the Lord, you're down, you're up, you're everywhere, you're omnipresent with the Lord when you start taking this food. This is spiritual food. Without this, we'll die spiritually. We cannot be born again apart from the Word of God. We can't be saved. We can't go to heaven apart from the Word of God. We've got to take this in. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing your ears. You have your ears on? Your ear on, brother? Yeah, you got two ears, brother. Yeah. Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Okay? So... The Apostle Paul again is very clear back in the book of Romans. And here we have the Apostle Peter telling us that the Lord is very gracious and has a desire to change us when we first call upon him. Calling upon him with a broken heart, with a contrite heart, with a humble heart saying, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned. I've violated your word. I've broken your law. I deserve eternal separation from God forever 
in a place called hell. We all do. Every single one of us does deserve that. But God said, for whosoever shall call and ask, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, you know, uh, the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23, Romans 5.8, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10.9, 10.9 and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, that's the resurrection, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, for with the heart, man believeth unto salvation. For with the, the, the heart, see, we believe with our heart, not just a mind confession, that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart the Lord Jesus that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness. That means salvation. That means God takes you from here and puts you over here unto righteousness. That is salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 13. You're calling upon him. You're asking him. But all these things are happening inside your mind, your mind and your heart. It is repentance. Repentance is a change of heart and mind about your sin. It's a broken, you're, you're thinking about what Christ did for you on the cross. You're thinking about what a sinner you are. You're thinking about what you deserve. And you're thinking about what Christ did for you. You're, thinking of, you're asking him to forgive you. Your heart is broken. It's contrite. You're, ask, you're, you, you're crying. You're asking him to forgive you and to cleanse you. And you are asking for forgiveness you're asking for salvation and the lord is taking the power of the holy spirit and he's putting it inside of you the earnest of the spirit that's his down payment for you for your soul salvation is a wonderful thing but now right after we're saved there's a new beginning a brand new way of life when i first got saved when i when i became a christian uh, I was a religious person. I was. I, I read my Bible. I tried to pray. I, I read. I memorized all kinds of recitational books. I, I, I would read the Bible, the Douay Rhymes. The Douay Rhymes was, was is a very good uh, translation, but but uh, that's what we had. We had the Douay Rhymes, and so we would read that. When it was always, it, it was never. We were never encouraged to read it, but we would read it anyway. And so that's how I began to learn and, and become interested in the things of God as, as a 16-year-old boy, as a 15, 16-year-old boy. And so when I got saved at 18, I began to get interested in the things of the Holy Spirit of God, put the interest of the things of God in me, okay? So there was a brand new beginning, a brand new beginning. Okay, if you go to your Sunday school quarterlies, you have Monday, 1 Peter chapter, chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. What things should be laid aside? Malice. What is malice? Guile. What is guile? Hypocrisies, pretending to be something that you're not. Envies, when you envy, you want something that somebody else has. You envy it or you covet it. Or, and all evil speaking. And we do that without even thinking sometimes. We have to be very careful about these horrible sins that creep in. And so we lay, us, Peter said, lay aside those things. Lay them aside. Put them away. Don't mess with them. Don't have, you don't need them anymore. You, don't, you, don't, you didn't have to have them. They, they were taking you down the wrong road. They were taking you down the wrong path. You're, you were headed down the wrong trail. Turn back. That's the Lord talking to you. That's the Lord trying to get your undivided attention. Trying to <laughs> Sometimes what he'll have to do, when he's trying to get your attention, you know it because you don't, you don't, you feel sick, you, you, you're, you're tired, you, you can't, you wake up in a sweat, you, you, sometimes the Lord has to take you, throw you out of bed, get your undivided attention. What does he have to do to get your attention? Let me ask you this. What does he have to do to get your attention today? He wants you on his side, not on the devil's side. Amen? And so we have here Monday, 
What things do we lay aside? Malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies, evil speakings. This is the five things that we lay aside. What do we desire instead of these things? The sincere milk of the word. Milk, why does Peter say milk? Because a baby has to have milk. When he's little, when he's growing up, when he's very first, <laughs> he has to have milk. That's the, that, that's, that's the first thing he looks for is that mama. He's got to have that mama. He's got to go. He's got to see if he can, what in the world's mama at? You know, <laughs> that's just, no, that's natural. That God put that in him. Uh, but God, but that's, that's the way it is when we get saved. Uh, where, where's, just like a little bird, where's that worm? <laughs> you know, but we, the way it is with us, where's that Bible? Where's that verse? Where do I turn? What do I read? Where do I look? I want to learn. I want to know. I want to see what the Bible says. I want to know what the scripture says about, about growing, about learning, about God, about Jesus, about the Trinity, about the Holy Spirit of God. And you start learning and you start growing and you start reading and you start listening and you start hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And your faith begins to, to get stronger and you get, begin to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what a new beginning is all about. Uh, you, you, uh, I, I, when I first got saved, I, I got a lot of uh, persecution from my family and, and I love them dearly, but they didn't, they didn't know. They didn't know and so bless their hearts. Uh, we, 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 I pray for them. And, but they, they didn't know, hey, why, why did you do that? Why, 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 what, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Why did you do that? So they don't understand. Their understanding is not there. Tuesday, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, who desires the sincere milk of the word? All newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Every child that comes into this world, every child that comes into the family of God is a babe in Christ, desires the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. Memorize the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Read the word of God. You'll grow thereby. That's, that's, that's what it means here. Whenever we desire the sincere milk of the word. Uh, you can't, a baby can't eat uh, meat and potatoes right away. Uh, how'd you like to bring your baby home one day and just, just put him in a corner and throw a can of beans on him and said, here you go, buddy. Have at it, mister. Help yourself. He's just going to look at you and say, a few minutes later, he's going to start crying. Why? He's hungry. It's up to you to feed him. Amen? Once he starts getting a little bit bigger and he's able to put the, uh, the bowl on his head and, and do all kinds of other things that babies do, and then you can just clean him up. And that's what the Lord does. He starts to clean us up. Uh, he, and uh, now he's <laughs> we don't give up our habits very easily. At least I didn't. Uh, he, he, he changed my heart. And I... And, and, there's some things I stopped doing right away that were wrong. And there's some things I started doing right away that I had never started that were right. New beginning. New beginning. What did you start doing at the beginning that was right? What things did you have that were a problem to stop? Maybe you used to smoke. I did. Maybe you used to cuss. I did. Maybe you used to uh, lie a lot. You know, maybe that's what was one of your problems. Maybe that was one of your your down downfalls. Maybe whatever whatever it was, you know what I'm talking about because it's part of the old nature that you still have when you get saved. You don't throw the old nature away. The Lord doesn't take the old nature away. He gives you a new nature. Through the Holy Spirit of God. You don't get rid of your old body. Your old body's still with you. That's the old nature, brother. That's, that's the corrupt body. This old flesh, brother. This, this old flesh. <laughs> Esta carne. This old flesh, brother, wants to sin all the time. So you got to get it under control. How do we get it under control? By the Holy Spirit of God. That's why we got to get in the Word of God because we want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? That's what that means when the Bible says that we need to get into the Word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to, 
strengthen us and to help us. And to, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That's the only way that we're going to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the desires and the lusts of the flesh. The flesh wants to sin all the time. That's just nor the natural. That's just natural. The natural man does not receive the, the thing, the things of God. The natural man receiveth not the things of the, for the things. The natural, the things of the spirit are are discerned, and the natural, the natural man receiveth not the spirit of God. The spirit of God discerns the things of God, and the the natural man cannot do that. See. Because he is still in the flesh. He's still in sin. He's still lost. He's still blind. He's still religious. He's still out there trying to figure out how to work his way into heaven. He can't, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, his grace, his love. That's how we get into the kingdom of God, by being born again. And if you were listening to my video last Saturday, uh, last week, anyway, uh, last Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, you learned about being born again. What does it mean to be born again? Lesson number nine. Uh, now we, we're in a new beginning. What happens whenever you get born again? You have a new brand, new beginning. Uh, you have a different heart, a different attitude, a very different mindset. You want to do, does that mean you do right all the time? No, you're not perfect. God didn't perfect you right away. Uh, you're not a perfect person. You still will fall. Somebody, somebody has to pick you up. If, if you pick yourself up, the Lord is, many times he's there to pick us up. We don't see him, but he's there to pick us up when we fall. As newborn babes, don't get discouraged. Discouragement is sin. Have you ever been discouraged? Of course. Have, Brother Al, have you been discouraged? Uh, absolutely, of course I have. My goodness, yes. Discouragement is a sin. It is wrong. And so the Bible says what happens to a newborn baby? He begins to grow. If he gets into the reading and the feeding and the eating of the word of God, that's how we begin to grow. First Peter 2, 1 through 3 says that. Now let's go over again to Wednesday. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. What happens to a newborn babe when he desires the sincere milk of the word? That newborn babe will begin to grow spiritually. Spiritually thereby, spiritually, spiritually. As a child, a little baby, you begin to grow physically thereby because you eat, you get into the milk. And then as you're getting bigger, uh, mama said, no more milk for you, buddy. Now we're going to get you into the, some pudding. We're going to get you into some uh, uh, Gerber. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to get you into the uh, some, uh, some chow, man. We're going to get some uh, meat and potatoes. No, not really, not yet. That's that's for the older people. When you're a little older, uh, can you imagine a child trying to eat right away meat and potatoes? No, it doesn't work that well uh, with him. He has to grow and be able to be able to sustain and maintain that diet without any problem and he does that whenever he's a little bit older but as a child he has to be careful what he and most kids once they start uh, getting bigger man they'll 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 want to eat anything they'll at least i did and that's the way it ought to be that's normal that's natural that's good that's the way you grow that's the way you get uh in my case now uh well we won't go there but uh you know what i'm talking about man my wife man a lot she'll put on she, a potato salad she'll put on uh, she'll put on fish. She'll put, she'll put on uh, the, uh, sometimes she'll put on meat, different kinds of meat. She'll put on different things and she'll put on, I, I like, I'm kind of a gravy, different kinds of gravy and salad and, oh my goodness, I could go on and on, but you know what I'm talking about, cornbread. Oh my goodness, man alive. Get out of town, man. I'll tell you what, brother, we, we're, we're getting down on the wrong trail here. Let's get to the Word of God. But that's, what am I saying? The Word of God is good. The Word of God is great. The Word of God, taste, if you've tasted, if you have so tasted that the Lord is gracious, taste it, your taste buds. What's a baby do? He wants to nibble on anything. He wants to chew on anything. He wants to grab a hold of anything. He can get his hands on. He can get his hands on anything. He'll... He'll try to chew it. He'll try, he'll, he'll try to eat it. So you got to be careful you get those things away from him. Why? 
he'll choke. He cannot swallow. He doesn't know how to properly uh, chew something. If it's not chewable, brother, he'll try to swallow it anyway. But that's the way we are as newborn babes. We, we're like little birds, man. Give me that worm. You've seen those little birds. When the mama comes and get that, that little worm or that little bug, and it steps on the, she flies up to the foot of that nest, and all you see is those little beaks go up like that, and man, they're hungry. That's the way we, we should be. That's the way we are for the Word of God. If you're not hungry for the Word of God, there's something wrong. If you're not hungry for the Bible, there's something wrong. If, there's, if, you're not, if you have no desire to read the Bible, there's something wrong. You are not hungry. You, are, you probably never got saved. I hate to say that, but that is probably the truth. Uh, man, when I got saved, I, I said, where is, the, where is the Bible? Where, where do I, what do I read? What do I do? Where do I go? What do I... And they handed me an old King James Bible, a red, red letter edition, a red cover, Sword of the Lord Publishers, it said on there. John Rice, it said, Sword of the Lord, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Man, I got a hold of that book and I opened it from cover to cover and I, everything that was readable in there, I read it. I didn't understand half of what it was saying, but I read it, I read it, and I read it, and read it, and read it to finally begin to make sense. But it took years to finally get it to where it finally began to make sense in this old uh, mind and this old heart. But faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. A lot of people know. They have Bibles at home. They have two or three different Bibles. They have four different Bibles. They, have, they, they don't read them. They don't because they get under conviction when they read them, or they feel bad when they read them, or they feel guilty when they read them. That's not the point. That's normal. I mean, we need to read the Word of God. The more we read it, the better, the better we're going to understand it, and the more we're going to learn, the faster we're going to come to Christ, and the more in faith and grace we're going to grow. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's how you get, that's how you get your faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, not a denomination. Oh, I'm, of, I'm not of your faith. I have my own faith. That's pride. Pride is the first sin that was committed by the devil. When he said, oh, I'll be like the Most High. I'm going to be like God. I am going to be God. I am going to take over. God said, no, nope. no, you don't. You're not taking anything over. If you're going to take anything over, it's going to be down on earth. And uh, we'll see you down there. And he was kicked out of heaven. He lost his dominion, lost his domain in heaven, and he got a new dominion and a new domain on earth. Uh, but because he's been in heaven and because he influenced one-third of the angels and got them to follow him, now a new heaven and a new earth has to be brought on the scene and re-created, re, uh, redone, re, uh, because you have, sin was there. Sin raised its ugly head in heaven uh, because of Lucifer, the devil, Satan. See? And so now we have a problem in heaven, and so now we have Adam and Eve on earth, and he shows up in the Garden of Eden right away. He shows up trying to see what he can mess up God's program. God had a perfect environment of innocence for them. He shows up. He starts talking to them. Hey, did God really say this? Did, uh, what, are you, what are you looking at? What do you, what, do you, what do you see? Are you looking at this tree over here? Look at this tree over here. Look how good it is for food when that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that the Lord had strictly commanded not to even get near it or eat of it or get, don't even hang around there. And Satan made sure that they, this woman that she came to, Eve, looked at and started thinking about it. And the more she looked at it, the more she coveted that, whatever the fruit was on it. And got her involved in eating and partaking of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she gave to her husband and ruined the human race, ruined the fall of man came, 
ruined everything. Fallen man at the Garden of Eden, vis-a-vis -vis the devil, Lucifer, Satan himself. Temptation, he knows what to do. He knows how to get you to sin. He's pretty good at it. The devil's not good because he's the devil. He's good because he's old. He's got a lot of practice. He knows how to do it. He knows how to tempt us. He knows how to lure us. He knows how to entice us. He knows how to do everything he can possible to get us to fall, no matter who we are. Uh, he knows how to get you to not to read your Bible. He knows how to get you not to pray. He knows how to get you not to think about God. He knows how to get you to sin ignorantly. And that's the worst kind of sin you can commit is an ignorant sin. Sin in ignorance. Ignorantly sinning. And so let's go back now to Thursday. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, chapter 2 and verse 3, what must a person have tasted if he is desire to if he is going to desire the sincere milk of the word? If so, I put down, if he's going to desire the sincere milk of the word, he has to taste that the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. The grace of God, the amazing grace of God is, is, is toward us. It's, it comes to you. You just have to take the pardon unto you. If you don't take the pardon, you reject the grace. If you say no to grace, if you say no to God, He'll say no. He'll have to say no to you later. But if you say yes to him down here, he'll say no. If you say yes to him down here, he'll say yes to you up there. But if you say no to him down here, he'll say no to you up there. And see, so grace is offered to us. It, it, grace is offered to you. And if you take it, the Lord is gracious. If you've tasted, if you've tasted that the Lord is gracious, you know that you have tasted of the sincere milk of the Word of God. You, man, once you taste that precious, clear, clean taste of the Word of God, you know how gracious and how good and how precious the Word of God is. And so Romans, uh, let's go to Friday, chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 1 and verse 2. Uh, the Bible says through the, through the Apostle Paul, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present yourself unto God and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed that you may know what is that good and acceptable. And, and, and it goes on and on and it says, don't be conformed to this world, but be, be transformed. See, a transformer is something that, com when electricity goes into a transformer, it sends out all of these, it, it gets the electricity and it regulates it in such a manner as to where it goes to every, every outlet and every inlet of that wire into each home and it regulates it and, it, and then it goes in down into that, uh, into that home and into that garage or to that shop or to that domain or to that domicile or to that little house or whatever it is, wherever those wires go and lead. But that transformer uh, does a lot of work. And that's what the Lord does through the Holy Spirit of God. He transforms our lives. He changes them. He shows us how to think. He shows us how to walk. He shows us how to talk. He shows us how to act he shows us what to do and what not to do and many times we don't do the right thing because we haven't been transformed the right uh, yet you know be transformed by the renewing of your mind see a lot of us have the old nature that we're still walking around uh lost a lot a lot of people are still walking around lost now uh, uh and, and so uh, i'm talking about to christians now those of you who are saved you're not lost you're saved. But those people that are saved, the Bible says that you were transformed because you presented your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, that you may know what is a, that acceptable and perfect will of God. And you know what, that the will of God is to read your Bible. The will of God is to pray. The will of God, first of all, was to get saved, was to get get you saved because you have a soul and that soul is precious and that soul is going to spend an eternity somewhere, either in heaven, either in heaven, or down in hell. 
so you, but you don't think it's serious enough so you don't do anything about it. When you get serious, see, it, the Lord's serious every day. We're not. God is a serious God. God is a perfect God. God is a just God. God is a holy God. So he's serious 24-7. We're not. We, we, we just think that it's, it's a game or, or, or we're just trying to bide our time here. And that's not, that's, you know, you, I've seen too many people pass away uh, and go to an uh, uh, abbreviated grave. I mean, it's terrible, man. A lot of, you know, young people, they didn't even get a chance to grow up or nothing, and they passed away. I just lost a little nephew to alcohol because he made some bad choices and some bad decisions a long time ago that he was going to start drinking and he was going to be a, t try to pretend to be tough. Look at me, look at me, I, I can drink. I can drink you under the table. That's pride, see? And, uh, and that's the way he was. And everywhere he he, he, you, you, saw him, you saw him, you looked at him, he was r trying to ride around and trying to show off with his beer and show, showing everybody his beer, showing everybody his miniatures and showing everybody his drinks and all of this and where he went and uh, his, the music. He had a full blast in his car. Party, 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 hearty, hearty. And he died. The wages of sin is death. He, it, it killed him. It took him to an early grave. He doesn't even have a grave. He doesn't, to this day, he doesn't even have... They gave his ashes to somebody and they just threw the ashes away. What is that? that that's, not, that that's not even memorial. That's, that's, not, that's desecrating a body. That's destroying a, the, human, the human remains and, and, and just... That was a human being. That was a, a precious soul. By the way, the soul lives forever. That's, that's tragic when we think that we can just go ahead and say, I'm going to be cremated. I don't care what happens. Ah, uh, bury me down in the arroyo. Dura, take me down to the river. I don't care what happens to me. Uh, you will the second you die because you're not going to wake up in heaven. When you have that attitude and you don't care, you will care after you die. I guarantee you. The rich man did. I read to you the story in Luke chapter 16, verse 19. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. Get me out of here. Abraham said, no, son. You remember in your lifetime? You remember in your lifetime? You remember what you did? You remember what you, what you rejected? You remember when somebody came to your home and tried to talk to you about the Lord? You remember when somebody tried to call you or text you? You remember when somebody tried to pray for you? You remember when somebody tried to witness to you and you shut them down? 